Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Winning Agenda. We've got a really exciting uh, game today. We're going to be cracking open a box of Core 2021. I'm excited to finally have my hands on this and also to be doing our very first full draft booster box unboxing on camera. If you like this kind of content and you want to see us doing a bit more of it, be sure to like and subscribe. If we get up to a thousand subscribers, we're going to be cracking open one of the collector's edition Ikoria booster boxes that we've got sitting up on the shelf over there. As you can see, we've got a value tracker just over here that we're going to be tracking along the value of the rares and mythics at anything over $2 value that we open from this box. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you at the end. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, one box of Magic 2021, ready to go. Let's get our knife out and crack on in. Got to have the right tool for the job. So give it a little... There we go. Crack on in to the inside of this beautiful Magic 2021 booster box. The Wizards of the Coast shrink wrap, as always. So it's good to be here. We've been waiting a while in the middle of this pandemic. Thankfully, shipments of Magic 2021 weren't too delayed compared to some sets. I hear there's going to be a little bit of a delay on Jumpstart. Hopefully not too much because I'm pretty keen to crack into that as well. We'll definitely have some unboxing videos of that coming up once Jumpstart is released. And uh, very much looking forward to Double Masters as well. But there we go, the empty box, nothing left. In there, what did we get? Did we get a Made in Japan? Uh, made in Japan, so there you go. First edition, now oh, we'll get the focus in on there so we can see that properly. Uh, there we go, Made in Japan, ladies and gentlemen. You can track me down, find out where I live. But, the main reason that we're here is for these beautiful Core 2021 booster packs. So let's get cracking. What are we looking for here? What are we hoping to find? We're hoping to see, I mean, Lily would be all right, but really I think it's Teferi, Ugin, and uh, what are we looking for? Uh, the Tudor. So what do we got first up? We've got a Hooded Blightfang, not too bad. A couple of decent uncommons. We'll just put those aside there. We're really only after the rares and mythics. There's not really much value in the uncommon slot. I mean, cultivates okay um, as far as uncommons go. It's got a pull tab, yeah. It's got a pull tab. Um, yeah, as far as uncommons go, cultivates not too bad, but there's not a lot of value sitting there. What do we got in the second pack? Liliana Standard Bearer. So it's this three to cost three one flash. When it enters the battlefield, draw X cards where X is the number of creatures under your control that died this turn. So it doesn't trigger off your opponent's creatures, only triggers off yours, but you know, a three cost three one with flash is not too bad on its own, and that may hold a little bit of value. So nothing crazy so far, nothing super exciting, but hopefully we'll hit some of those sweet big mythics. One of the disappointments in this set, and I know that anyone who's opening boxes has kind of spoken a bit about this, is the fact that, oh, Containment Priest, that's a nice reprint. And we've got the Foil Anointed Chorister as well. One of the disappointments is, I think, the land cycle. So, um, you know, as many people have pointed out, we've got the temples coming back in this set. And, um, you know, the temples... I've seen a, a fair few reprints recently, and they're not really the most exciting lands. I mean, when you're looking for a, a rare land cycle, you really want Spark Hunter Manticore? Eh. Not something anyone ever really wants. Uh, but yeah, as far as rare land cycles go, what you really want is something that comes into play untapped or at least gives you the opportunity. You know, I mean, obviously shock lands are famous for their capacity to come into play untapped. Fetch lands, obviously, particularly with shock lands, give you that opportunity. But temples just don't. Ooh, Elder Gargaroth, first mythic. Um, so again, we're not going to really look at the uncommons because they're not giving us a lot in terms of value or constructed playability. So we'll really just kind of focus on the mythics and the rares in this uh, box opening. But Elder Gargaroth is a really interesting one. There was kind of a lot of hype around it early on. Um, it's obviously super efficient. I mean, five for a six, six, three relevant keywords, vigilance, reach and trample. Um, and whenever it attacks or blocks, you get a three, three, three life or to draw a card. So extremely powerful if you can get to stick on the board. Whether it holds much value um, or sees much playing constructed remains to be seen, but uh, not a bad hit early on in the box. So not one of the chase mythics, and we haven't seen really any of the showcase cards yet um, or any of the big mythic hits, but you know, a couple of nice cards to start off. 
a foil waker of the waves and a see the truth yeah, see the truth I think it's a couple of bucks maybe but I don't see it holding a lot of value um, and a foil wake of the waves is not going to do too much for us a couple of other interesting uncommons and I mean there is some pretty nice art in this set oh, there's one of the showcases I guess that's one reason to kind of maybe go through the commons and stuff at least in most of these packs is just to see if we do get some of those showcases I think maybe we'll put that aside in its own pile there as well um, just so that we're keeping track of how many we do get so we get stuck into another pack here we're getting a reasonable amount of the way through the first stack of the box uh, nothing too exciting so far let's get this focus right back up right here uh, there we go all right yeah so thieves guild enforcer another one that i mean it's not too bad sitting in there at a one drop flash gives you a bit of mill and gets a bit bigger but you know i mean even a three two death touch that mills for two when it comes into play with flash for one mana yeah it's pretty good but the fact that it's conditional that you get the larger version and even then death touch is not the most exciting keyword on a three one three two as opposed to a one on i'm a little bit confused by the design of that card i have to say but anyway we'll see if it holds any value Right, so Fairy's Aegis Insight is one that I'm actually really excited to see. So that's a nice pull. Um, this is one that I'm pretty excited about in a number of casual decks and could even see play in standard. Um, it's got the kind of Alhamrit's Archive ability that for only four mana, it is a legendary enchantment, but it gives you the opportunity to get ahead pretty far and it turns spells like Opt um, and any cantrip into really quite a strong card. Um, so yeah, if you can land one of these, it's a pretty nice one. Uh, got the Alpine Houndmaster. There's all of the uncommons, the um, uh, another one of the showcase cards for Liliana there. All of the uncommons that are two colors, the kind of signpost uncommons as they're often referred to, are pretty powerful uh, in limited in this set, as you would have seen in our limited set review. Oh, two packs instead of one. Uh, we're pretty excited by those in limited, but uh, certainly they could also see a little bit of play in constructed. So that's Soldier. Jacob Casper, great illustration. I love how it's got that kind of stained glass look on the inside of its shield. Like, is that actually stained glass? I can't imagine stained glass would be particularly practical as a material to make your shields out of. Uh, Transmogrify. So exile a creature, that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library till they reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and then shuffle their library. One in a long line of those sorts of effects, um, usually in blue, but interesting to see it coming into red. Eh, it's okay. Nothing too exciting. No massive hits in this box so far. No more showcase cards in that pack. Uh, so we're not hitting, we haven't hit a kind of showcase rare or mythic. We haven't hit uh, any of the particularly exciting mythics. So hoping to pick this up a little bit in terms of quality. Oh, lost our focus there. Hang on. All right, so the Idol of Endurance, uh, and we did have a foil land. It's not a foil showcase land, it's just a regular old foil forest. Um, Idol of Endurance may have some uh, ability to do some kind of shenanigans, but at this point I'm not super excited about it. But, you know, it's certainly got shenanigan potential. And no more showcase cards in the rest of that pack. So I'll put the Idol in the pile. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I mean, I know there's a lot of negativity going around about, oh, COVID, you know, what's going to happen to Paper Magic? There's a lot of negativity about, oh, there's so many products being released. Wizards really draining us, but, oh, Foil Azusa Lost But Seeking. That is one of the nice reprints in this set, and I've kind of spoiled the, the other rare in the pack, but wow. Azusa was one of the reprints that people were pretty excited about, so obviously getting a foily version is pretty sweet. I skipped over this creepy looking cat token it's more like a i guess panthers are cats aren't they very panthery cat token but um yeah azusa lost but seeking not bad as uh hopefully first of a couple of foil res uh, but not a bad hit nonetheless uh who knows we might even get a foil mythic so here we got animal sanctuary not bad animal sanctuary has Really weird art, doesn't it? I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, there's a lot of creepy creatures going on there, but yeah, wow. 
it's kind of like weirdly computer generated. Elena Dana. It's cool. I wouldn't mind having that on a playmat, I have to say. But it kind of looks like the animals are superimposed. Does anyone else get that vibe? They don't kind of blend into the landscape. Maybe that's deliberate. Who knows? All right, so we're on to the second stack and we got the foil Azusa, but nothing terribly exciting in terms of the mythics. We did get uh, the one mythic Gargaroth. All right, Garrick. Again, not the most exciting from the Planeswalker cycle, but mythic number two, reasonably good. Um, we also got the foil mask Blackguard. Again, nothing to write home about, but yeah. Oh, also a Tormod's Crypt. I might just put that aside as well because I think that, I mean, could be a couple of dollars. I don't know, I haven't looked at the prices before I'm recording the video, but I'm gonna put it aside anyway. Uh, so yeah, a bit further into the second stack, two Mythics up now, but still none of the, all right. Showcase, planes, that's always nice to see. I'm not sure how much value these showcase lands are gonna hold, but they are certainly nice. And the first temple, look, I mean, temples, yeah, cool. Like I'm gonna probably play them in some random casual decks. Maybe they'll make it into a couple of standard decks, particularly once the shocks rotate, but kind of wish it was a different land cycle. Don't want to bang on about that point, but it would kind of be nice. All right, so let's hope for, Ugin hasn't shown up yet, uh, Necromentia. All right, nothing exciting, nothing too exciting. No more showcase cards there, no. So, kind of hoping for Ugin, Teferi, one of the big hits, Grim Tutor. All right, we've got a Forest and a Fiery Emancipation. Ugh. Mythic number three, and it's uh, basically a Flame Wave. I mean, Oh no, this is the one that triples. Yeah, this is kind of cool. I mean, yeah. Tripling things we've seen can be pretty powerful and who knows, there could be some sweet, sweet combo deck out there that wants to lightning bolt people for nine. Six mana is a lot though. I feel like six mana spells and lightning bolt, traditionally not the greatest of friends, but there is a lot of upside in that card. So we'll see. And I'm sure there's gonna be some crazy decks in some crazy formats out there. They're gonna be happy to be Lightning bolting people for nine all day long and are gonna want that card. So might hold a little bit of value. So we've got Dismal Backwater, Run a Foul, Foil, and Sanctum of All. Okay. Anytime you see like the five color converted mana cost, they don't do that all that often. And the cards tend to be reasonably popular because they tend to have a reasonably high power level. If, they, if it's asking you for all five colors of mana to cast it, it's probably gonna be a reasonably decent card. That one, you know, it's got high upside if you can really get the five colors all going. Uh, showcase Swamp, thanks Lily. And a Pursued Whale, old Moby Dick. It is a very strong card. Um, basically the ability to sort of Plague Wind if you've got enough blockers to, to wipe them and it's got a little bit of inbuilt protection. Seven mana is a lot, but you know, it's not the worst reanimate target. Uh, there are, there have certainly been worse. And we have got a common reanimator in this set. If we still had some kind of like block constructed format, uh, that may be some kind of strategy that you might go with, but uh, it's certainly not gonna compete in standard at the moment, I don't think. Um, Heroic Intervention, yeah, it's a nice reprint. Happy to see that, no more showcase cards there. So not bad on the Heroic Intervention. So we're still sitting on the Gargaroth. Oh, we put the Garrick in the regular pile, look at me failing to select out my mythics properly. So I get Garrick in the mythic pile. Um, also Fire Emancipation, what am I doing? Get those mythics in the mythic pile. So three mythics so far, more than halfway through the box. And Foil Canopy Stalker and a Maze Mind Tome. Okay, so yeah, Maze Mind Tome, I could certainly see this seeing some play. Two is cheap enough for the ability to over time draw four cards that yeah, I can see that working out and it's got a little bit of flexibility in terms of the scry as well. Not a lot going on there in terms of showcase cards though. Oop, knock the camera. All right, so we've got the goblin wizard token again, the forest and storm again, see? All right, all right. 
A little bit disappointing, I have to say. So, I mean, we've already hit three Mythics, so who knows if we're going to hit any more. We really want to get one of those big hits, you know, a Showcase, Grim Tutor, Teferi, Joel Rail, Monvuli, Recluse. Certainly a cool theme. It's nice to have that sort of like Mirage, Visions era vibe coming back. Um, and it's got a lot of synergy with a lot of the drawing cards matters. Cards in blue and green in this set. Not too bad kind of amount of stuff going on for a two drop, but yeah, let's see. We'll see how that card turns out. A glorious Anthem and, oh, Containment Priest. Nice, nice. That's what we're after. Would have been nice to see Ugin or Mr. T, but Containment Priest is certainly not a bad one to pick up. Sweet. So that pack, not a bad pack. Glorious Anthem, serviceable rare. And I think we can put the Containment Priest in the uh, the Mythic pile, the extended art version. Oh, and a cheeky little Teferi's protege hiding out there at the back. Don't know how much value those showcase commons are going to hold, particularly the, the non-foil versions. I think the lands will hold, you know, maybe a dollar value or something like that, but... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the commons. Garrick's Uprising. Ah, there's a four in the showcase. And then Baron. Uh, yeah, old mate Baron. He's got a decent comes into play ability. Can give you a bit of uh, bit of value. Not too unhappy to see him turn up. So, come on, Ugin. Come on. No, temple. All right, Temple number two. Again, not too excited to see the temples come out. Put the cultivator side uh, with the Tormod's Crypt up there, just in case it ends up holding any value. No more. All right, so we're in the last pile, last stack of packs, the last third of the box. Can we bring it home strong? I hope so. So we've got a knight. No, oh, to Fairy Island. Is that a good sign? Terror of the Peaks. <sighs> Another miss on the Mythics. Little bit disappointed in the mythics in this box, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody else. This is um, not turning out to be the best box in terms of mythic pulls. At least we got the containment priest, but oh boy, oh boy, kind of feel like we're getting a little bit hosed here. Radar, heart of Keld, and no more showcase cards. All right. So if we were to just take stock for a moment with not too long to go, we'll just get this focus right. So not, not too far to go. We've got, what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine packs to go. Nine packs to go in terms of the rares. We've got a couple of hits. Um, you know, Heroic Intervention's a nice one. Mm, well, the yeah, Understanded Bearers are right. Rudder's could be interesting. And in terms of the mythics, we've already picked up four mythics and the box topper, but none of them particularly exciting. Perhaps the Gargaroth will hold a bit of value. We're not quite sure on that yet. So let's see whether we can't bring it home strong. Just get this focus happening on this pack as we go. All right. So Mr. T, Grim Tudor, Ugin, come at me. Oh. Not quite get that pull tab. So, what are we looking at here? Yep, oh, ruined Halo. Another one of those reprints, you know, it was in Ultimate Masters. Uh, it's just not, like, if I pulled that in an Ultimate Masters booster pack, I'd be kind of like, eh. So pulling it in a booster pack here, like, yeah, it's a decent reprint, but it's just not that exciting. All right, what can we get? We got... Eight packs left. Ooh, nice. Showcase Basri's Lieutenant. And Korean Dryad, which kind of feels like a rare, so this would be a pretty sweet pack to open up. But yeah, Basri's Lieutenant is certainly a nice one. Pretty happy to pick that up. So Garrick's the only Planeswalker we've got so far. Um, it'd be nice to kind of pick up one of the others, as we said, you know, Ugin Grim Shooter. Teferi's obviously the big hit if we can hit that. Temple of Triumph, another Foil Rare, and a Spore Web Weaver. So Foil Temple, yeah, I mean, I think our two Foil Rares, like, if you're going to get a Foil Rare, you don't mind it being a Rare Land most of the time, you know? Like, Rare Lands are okay. As far as 
foil rares go. They might not be the best rare lands, but you know, they're still rare jewel lands. And not too upset to get that as a foil. So kitty cat, the black kitty cat with the green eyes and the rather large fangs. Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Um, Traitorous Greed, a few other bits and pieces, no more showcase up. Oh, yep, little showcase Gorhorn. A card with no text in its text box whatsoever. And then, all right, so we got, what do we got here? One, two, three, four. This is five packs left, including this one. Another temple. So we're hoping for another mythic. We've already got four mythics, so you know I wouldn't wouldn't bank on it. But another mythic here would be really nice to finish off this box. I think getting the containment priest, getting the foil temple, and the foil Azusa kind of gives us at least some value. But we really want, I think, one nice mythic. Whoa, the weird, weird, weird. And Kavik the spiteful, Knight of Souls betrayal on a stick. And then not a lot going on there. All right, what are we? Three packs left. Come on. One more mythic. Can we do it, ladies and gentlemen? Boys and girls and everybody else who is watching the video. Uh, Chandra's Incinerator. Okay, not too bad. We really want one more mythic, though. Come on. Two packs to go. One more mythic. Can we do it? Beast. And the Ambi. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I feel like we're probably... Oh, that's exactly right. Hiding out there at the back. I feel like we're probably not going to get a heap more value. One more pack. All in all, not the greatest box. Four Mythics, but nothing terribly exciting. Can we get one more Mythic on the last pack? No, we can't. All right. So no Foil Mythic. Um, no... Big hits on the Mythics, but, you know, a few decent cards nonetheless. Uh, let's have a final look through the pool. So we got nothing really in that last stack of packs, but we've got the Containment Priest, Terror of the Peaks, Fire Emancipation, Garrick Unleashed, and Elder Gargaroth as our kind of Mythics and Box Topper of sorts. Um, and then as far as the res go, a bit of a mixed bag. Chandra's Incinerator, nice one. Couple of Temples, not holding heaps of value. Basra's Lieutenant in the Showcase forms, a nice one. Another Temple, Joel Rail. Stormwing Entity could see a bit of play as well. Um, Maze Mind Tome and Heroic Intervention, not bad hits. Um, and then, yeah, a few more decent rares along the way. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this format shakes out, what turns out to be good. And of course, um, in the foil slot, we got the Foil Temple of Triumph, uh, and we also got the Foil Azusa Lost But Seeking. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's the first Winning Agenda unboxing video that we've done. We hope that we are able to do many more. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, we will be opening an Ikoria Collector's Booster box if we get up to a thousand subscribers. Uh, so we're really hoping to be able to do some more content. Uh, we're also going to do some Jumpstart Booster box on openings. We're going to do some Double Masters Booster box on openings. Uh, and of course, a few more assorted Booster box openings along the way, as well as our usual fantastic strategy content uh, where we talk through gameplay and our weekly streams. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Jesse Marshall for The Winning Agenda.